right. Um, so I still don't see Don. And there's Donnie right there. Hello. Hey, Don, how are you? Good. Beautiful day. It sure is. All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, it is the Moortown Select Board meeting. It is Monday, May 18th. Uh, going on again on the phone conference um, uh, based on um, just the safety, I guess, uh, and, and guidelines. Uh, but I think um, by next meeting, our first meeting in June, we should be able to meet. And uh, Don, at that point, now we we uh, should get together. I'm sorry we didn't uh, talk, but I just spoke with John and decided that we uh, probably uh, was better to have it on the phone this week. Yeah, that's what I was in that email. So... Um, we'll just go ahead and, uh, is there anyone on the line for, for general public comment? No. No. All right. And I think, and, uh, Cheryl, and you just joined, huh? I did. Thank you. All right. So, because I think that's everyone that's on the line. If you, if you haven't been uh, introduced, please, uh, take yourself off mute and, and do introduce yourself. But I think everyone's, uh, accounted for um, so let's go ahead. Uh, if there's no general public comment, uh, Cheryl, and I believe you were uh, wanting to be put on the agenda, and that's the uh, budget revote procedure in June. Is that uh, you? Yes, that's correct. All right, what's up? So uh, we have a vote on June 16th for a revote on the Harvard Union Unified School District, mm-hmm. and I the um, Governor has just signed off on Act 9 2020 uh, for COVID um, elections. The select board can adopt um, one of five different um, procedures to use to conduct an election. And um, due to the um, COVID, I'm asking the select board to adopt the um, drive up voting method so that we can hold this election safely for voters as well as myself and staff. All right. Um, so I don't have those those five uh, choices in front of me. Do you mind um, discussing what they are, and then we can talk about um, the drive-up voting? Can you just sure. a short synopsis on them? Yep. Um, the um, select board can adopt to have the, um, every voter be mailed a ballot. Um, They can implement a drive-up voting procedure. Um, There are other different ways of um, holding, you know, we could just mail about to everyone. I don't think that that's a feasible way of doing it. Um, So rather than have everyone be face-to-face, I'm asking that we can um, hold the drive-up. I was intending to have people drive in through the school entrance. Uh, be checked off the entrance checklist, and then vote in the parking lot, and then deposit their own ballot um, in the depo- in the ballot box that would be held at the little parking area right near the church. As well as absentee ballots can be done just as normal, as they always have been. All right, and you think that'll be doable with all the construction going on and such? Um. It can't be any different than having them drive into the parking lot anyway to come vote into the office because that's where it would be otherwise at the office. So they're yeah. going to be using the parking lot no matter what. Yep. All right, what's everyone think? John, you want to start? That sounds uh, okay to me. Uh, Ray, you got a thought on this? Yeah, no, it, it sounds doable to me. I think. You know, uh, we'll just have to. Uh, I'll, I'll work it out with the Du Bois crew that on that very day that we would l- limit ourselves to try to get our materials and stuff out into the street earlier the previous day or something like that. That uh, we won't be uh, interfering much with the traffic there. So uh, I, I think it's doable. All right, um, Charlie. How about yourself? Any uh, opinion on this? That's fine with me. All right, 
Tonic, what do you think? Well, I, I don't understand, so I'm going to drive in in my car, put my window down and say, hi, I'm, I live, I'm a resident, I'm, come to vote. And I check in that way, correct? Correct. And then I'm going to park my car and get out and vote in a booth and then drop my ballot in a thing and get back in my car. No, you're going to vote in your car in the parking lot so that you don't yeah. have to be face to face with anyone. And then on your way out, you're going to exit and drop your ballot into a box, into the, into the ballot box. Well, I'm in my car. Well, you're in your car. Oh. The uh, other option was to be able to just have the a local election right outside, like in the ball field there, but I don't think that that will be wise because we don't know what the weather's going to be like. So if anybody's going to be getting wet and so so wet, it'll be myself or my staff under a tent. Yeah, and then people wouldn't come and vote, so, you know. Right. Was poor, you know. But we're still going to have absolute balloting, just like we always have. Right. Well, that's coming up. When When is the vote? June what? June 16th. And yeah, rather right. than having polls open from 7 to 7, I'm going to have them open from 10 to 7. So if to vote absentee, someone has to call, reach out to you and get a ballot sent to them? Correct. Wow. They'll either yes. call, leave me a message, or send us an email, which is what, or, yeah, that that's what they always do anyway. So they'll either call or send me an email. Right. No, it's just a small, it's a short window of time. It's barely a month. It's a I, month. I, I hear you. Um, the clerks yeah. and, health and even the Secretary of State has tried to get them to hold it off until the primary, but they don't want to do that. But, Cheryl, I think um, what you've come up with, if you have proper uh, PPE, uh, you and your staff at the tent, um, as you're handing, you're, you're, you're taking a name, checking it off, and then handing a ballot, um, you're not receiving anything from anyone. Um, I think I think it's a good idea. And then uh, yeah. as long as, it, you know, there's somewhere on the other side that's a... Um, that it can be dry, that they can drop it into a some kind of a ballot box, uh, you know. Even that, yeah, that, I think that will work well. Okay. So, but it's and as yeah, I just lost my phone. And as far as the um, primary in the November election, the state is still trying to work out procedures and determining how we're going to do it. They have not come up with a definite solution yet as to whether or not we're going to. Oh, mail, whether or not they're going to mail a ballot to every person or not, so that's something we don't have to work time. Um, yeah, well, we can, as that gets closer and as they make their decision whether they're going to have mail-in ballots or, or leave it to the towns, you know, we can certainly um, do that. But I think uh, for this one on June 16th, that's a great idea. Okay. So I just, if you guys agree with it, I just need you to adopt. Um, the municipality may implement a drive-up voting procedure, so that I just need you to adopt the drive-up voting procedure. And I'm going to work with Will Fenning, the director of elections, and he's going to walk. He's going to help me through it. All right. Does anyone want to uh, make a motion on that to adopt the drive-up procedure? Sure, I'll make the motion. Thank you, Ray. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Uh, the motion is to see if the town of Moortown, the select board, will adopt uh, a drive-up voting procedure for the June 16th uh, Harvard Union Unified uh, um, School District Budget Revote. Um, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Uh, uh, I, I just had one question, uh, Tom. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, any further uh, discussion? Ray, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I lost uh -huh. my phone there for a minute, so I can hear all the conversation. But uh, so when they exit, will they be putting the ballot into a uh, box or into the uh, electric the ballot machine? No, it'll go into a locked ballot box. Um, there's no tabulator for Harwood. It's just a paper vote because it's all commingled at the end of the night. Okay. 
Okay, yep. that was my question. Just like it is that town meeting when we have to vote on um, the hardwood budget, you you drop your colored ballot into that box, and your town ballot goes into the tabulator. There just won't be a tabulator. And and those ballots will be brought over to Harwood for counting. Yep, two BCA members will bring it over for me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, just before we don't we have a, a a vote in August that we were going to be doing, or we're we not doing that now. No, we do. It's the it's the primary. The and then everyone was um, suggesting that the school board, Donnie, do that, um, mm -hmm. but they. Um, chose not to no no i understand so in august and we'll, we'll have to i'm just wondering while we're taking this vote do we want to or we want to wait till then to see what what the procedure will be then in august well the um the governor and um the uh secretary of state are debating that now they're working together to try to figure out um what is the best procedure yeah okay so until we hear what they have come up with, whether it's an all, and I don't think it's all, you know, they're they're talking about it all. Um, everyone gets a mailed in or a mailed ballot, which I don't think is going to happen. But um, you know, we will take our you know marching orders from them, and then um, you know whatever we have for options, maybe they'll give us again this option to do it the way we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Any further discussion on the motion? All right, all in favor, vote aye. 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 So, so there you go, Sherilyn. Um, you can work with Will and figure out what works best, but uh, um, if there's anything you need from us, you know, let us know. Okay, thank you. Um, while you're on the line there, um, why don't you share a little bit with us about you've been back now, I know, a couple uh, a couple weeks you know, can you tell us how that's working, what needs to be changed, and then maybe share a little bit about um, the grant you're working on for um, COVID-19 recovery for expenses and such? Yeah, um, I've been going back to the office, obviously, to do payroll and AP, um, and I've also been um, going in once a week to allow title searches to happen. Most town clerk's offices are not even doing that, but I just felt that there was a lot going on, um, had some feedback from attorneys, and felt that it was necessary to go back. Um, face masks and gloves are to be worn at all times, um, and I haven't had any problems with anyone having an issue with that, so it's been working well. Um, by, by appointment only. Um, and as far as um, paying for the um, working our way up towards slowly reopening. Um, we've purchased some face masks, face some gloves, and that order. Um, so we still don't have access to everything. So you can think about being open folk. So we're going to continue to do what we're doing. People seem to be fine with it. Um, everything's been going through the mail, and um, I have had it. So um, I have a quote coming tomorrow, Larry, um, at the office tomorrow to do some measurements for plexiglass. Um, he's going to then do me up a quote so that I submit a grant with through FEMA. Hopes that every you know it won't be everything, but majority of our expenses will be paid for. Um, our expenses have to be thirty-five hundred dollars or more in order to qualify for a grant at all. And it looks like we'll be well over that with this plexiglass um, because it's you know it's it's not it's pretty expensive. So Larry has actually um, drawn a plan, and um, the glass company actually purchased um, are taking on his plan for what he's developed you know um, constructed for offices or stores or whatever. So. It looks like we're going down the same route, a good route. I didn't want to go somewhere where it's not going to look nice with a nice office that we have. But at the same time, we didn't want to spend a whole lot of money. So after speaking with him last week, it looks like it's going to run anywhere between thirty-five to $5,000. 
Um, again, like I said, I'm going to apply for this grant, but I can't do that until I have the actual quote in hand. And I should have that this week. Thanks, Sherlyn. Um, any questions, Sherlyn? Yeah, I'm here. No, I still no, have questions for you. Oh, no, I'm I'm all set. Anyone else has any other questions? Ray, anything? Well, if there's no questions, um, Cheryl, you want to hold on, or I don't. I guess there's nothing um, pending for you. Is there anything else that you had? That's um, no. Uh, no, I'm. I'm uh, I actually have one little question to ask. So, in the in the office and and then the meeting room, uh, are we yeah, when we eventually can get back in there and have a meeting? I think Tom, you mentioned we could sit maybe next meeting we might be able to have there. How would we, what what do we do there? We're not gonna have plexiglass up in that, but we're just gonna like all sit six feet apart. Is there any requirement or, or what I the think, hell would you do that? You know, I think again I uh that's why I wanna look at it with you, but I think we should we can look at the town office, but we may want to uh uh start in the other building at this point, uh in the town hall. Um, because it is much larger and, you know, we can space out and yeah. probably get a few people in, in the building as well. Or maybe the school even. Either. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah. I, the I prefer to is. use the, um, the town property though. Yeah. Can, can I, can I say real quick? Sure. Um, I just want to let you know that um, title searchers right now are actually set up in the meeting room so that we don't have any, they don't have access to the town clerk's area at all. Um, so I've had to move the table sideways in order to set up the search station. I have to clean in between every single person that comes in and have to allow 15 minutes between each person in order to do that. So um, wow. if you guys are going to end up coming back to the office you can just give me some time so I can figure that out. It's just we're trying to keep everyone so that we're not on the same room. Oh yeah, no, for sure. It would seem to, uh, just to make sense that we, you know, meet in the town hall. Yeah, I think that's it's a big enough building. Um, it's a great building and it's got parking and, uh, you know, we can work it out. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to speak with uh, the library and see what their plans are. You know, I don't know what. Um, you know, for those spaces, you know what the what the protocol is going to be going on going forward because it is you know with um, books and such, and so you know we just don't know. But um, we can certainly use the space, um, you know, here at the same time, so we can. Well, you know, they we'll don't allow anybody. You know, the books and when you take it's all curbside. Right, and so we're not gonna, so it may or may not affect them at this point, but they may get to a point where there is, you know, an opportunity for people to go back into the library. So, um, but that's why we'll, you know, we'll reach out to the library and see what their plans are, but also let them know that um, these are our plans and this is what we're going to be doing. And we'll have, we'll have to spend a little time in there uh, uh, to figure out what configuration will work best, but um, I think that's what we'll do. Um, while we're talking about the library space, the town hall space, um, we are still not, I have, we're not renting the town hall at all until further notice. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Have you had anyone that's wanted to rent it? Um, I have not had anyone ask, but we do have a booking. I believe it's in August. I don't have the calendar right up in front of me, so I'm kind of holding off on that one. Maybe... Um, maybe I should reach out to them and just say, hey, this is where we're at. We don't know what's going to happen, which I'm sure they probably wouldn't even want to have anything right now either. But yeah, do you um, know what is, what's, what's the event? Um, it's a birthday party. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we can, uh, you know, don't need to pull the trigger on that one yet. But, uh, yeah, right. we're not sure at this point what's going on. Right. All right. All right. Uh, um, so we've got uh, anything else with with Sherilyn? 
All right. And Not at my end. Nope. Everyone's good. All right, Charlene, yeah. well, thank you. Feel free to stay on if you want. Okay, John, I just have a question for John. Are you all good with the Finance Committee report, or do you want me to hold off and wait for you? Uh, no, I'm okay. Okay. All right, then I will sign off then. And all right, Sherilyn, thanks. thank you. Okay. All right, thanks, Sherilyn. Yeah, thank you. Good night. All right, well, if, um, all right, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, Construction update. I don't know if uh, Ray, you want to start with that. Start with that. Uh, if you're doing anything. So, uh, so we we really started mobilizing the soft mobilization uh, last Friday. We started putting signs up and kind of continued on that route today. Uh, got some materials today. Um, had a meeting uh, on site with the hunt and looked at the hedges by the fire station and uh came up with an agreement that we're gonna uh we're gonna remove them with the excavator and and hopefully uh replant them and and uh, and they'll live if they don't live then we'll replace them uh and the, everybody seems to be happy with that all right good yeah they but, were uh, very uh they've been very agreeable uh initially it was a little a little shaky when Nick and I first met with uh, James Hunt, but um, they've really come around and, and they're pretty much on board with, you know, Good. basically everything that we want to want to do. The the only other issue was was the the outlet pipe and and um, uh, we had talked about you know trying to put more dirt on top to make a look of it. Then we realized that we wouldn't be able to put any dirt down down there anyway so but uh yeah they were okay with you know the design that we talked about and everything yeah john uh late today i did talk with uh i sent an email out and i should have copied you but anyways so the design uh uh the design engineer uh has signed off on shortening the pipe so the pipe Good. won't be sticking out in the middle of the stream there Good. and we're just uh, make the channel larger. Uh, the only thing they're asking is for the town to sign off on it. And then, uh, so um, there'll probably be some first sort of paperwork out to you tomorrow just uh, for you to sign off on as the town that okay. you're okay with, with that. Yeah, that's fine. That sounds good. Okay. Good. Um, so the Lone Pine is still is still standing. Uh, is that it correct? Is, yes. Uh, just uh, Green Mountain Power did their their thing, cut some branches and so on. So um, I think later this week, right, Ray? Maybe. Yeah, I think actually, John. I think it's probably at this point going to be right after Memorial Day. Okay. Uh, All right. It was, it'll be next week, I, I'm sure. We just okay. Had a, All right. The reason it didn't get done this week was uh, there were some issues with the traffic control plan and. I got sent to somebody who sat on it. Uh, I didn't know what to do with it, so it was kind of. Uh, but we're all set now, so uh, things are falling into place that uh, shouldn't be any more delays that I know of. Okay. All right. So, so can we get? I don't know if anyone saw that. There was a on front. Uh, yeah, I was just going to. Yeah, there's been a couple. I've gotten some directly emailed to me and stuff too. So. Is there a, so is there a way, uh, Ray, to get a few slices or a piece of that tree? Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. We'll work with, uh, you know, uh, when the tree is being cut. Uh, I don't know if Don or uh, Don admitted that somebody else would help guide us through that, too, but the, I don't see that as being a big problem at all. All right, good. Yeah, and then we can, I don't know, get him somewhere and whoever wants to put it something together can do it yeah you think those guys across the street could could mill it for the town no. or something no it's too big too, it would be too big yeah we already we already tried that yeah oh, so. okay i mean i've heard people also mention maybe even some benches or a picnic table or something right yeah as a matter of fact uh michael brown um you know, he's got his company, Bird's Eye Forestry. He said yeah. that he would be happy to donate time and, and effort and, you know, putting together benches and, and so on, too. So I, I think we're 
you know. You know who's doing we'll that use, now? We'll use a bunch of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gary Brown, um, you know, he's been milling wood now. That's what he's doing. You know, yeah. Cheryl's husband. Yeah. 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 Cause, uh, so he, he might be able to help. Yeah. So, all right. So, John, make sure uh, you're with Ray and make sure there's a significant, you know, I'm sure it's just it's pine. No one wants it. You know, otherwise it's not a real valuable piece of tree. So um, let's get all the big working portions that we can. And, um, right. We'll and and I've also, also gotten another email out to uh, Rachel um, Milner because, after all, it is her tree. So, I mean, you know. Right. You know, we've been talking about what we're going to do with the wood and everything, and and uh, I, but I know that she doesn't have any interest in in any of it. Just some wood chips, uh, yeah. Which I'm also going to get some, but um, I'd love some too. Yeah, I figured it'd be nice to have that some wood chips from that tree in in, in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh... Sounds like that lone pine will be well uh, well used. So, is there any other construction uh, updates on that project that we want to talk about? Well, just on the back to the pine tree, would, would I mean would want me to reach out to ask Gary Brown about it? If he has any suggestions, if he can mill it or anything. Um, or you, just yeah, why don't we see what we get? Um, okay. Cheryl works with us quite a bit, so uh, yeah. Uh, and John, so yeah, we can uh, certainly work with them. Ray drives by there all the time. Yeah, I talk with Cheryl uh, periodically myself, so we can. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much copy her on on just about everything. So I, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll double check with her. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Ray, anything else, or John, or or anyone? Any other issues on the start or start of construction? Uh, no. Uh, well, we may. Um, there's just one other tree that we're probably going to end up taking down, and that's the the ash tree that's uh, in front of the uh, Westerman Gempst rental property, right next to the store. Yep. Um, um, and that's not covered. That's that's since it's out of the right of way. Um, that's not part of the project. So, uh, Ray, you're uh, you're going to get the numbers from TreeWorks. Is that what it would be? Yeah. Yes, I will, John. And then we'll we'll discuss it further at that point. Uh, uh, yep. What is uh, why why is that one coming down too? Well, it it would have to be trimmed up. It it has does does have some uh, rot in it. Um, it also looks like. Uh, that emerald ash borer is in, in there as well, um, and because uh, it has lots of lots of exit holes, but it could that could have to do with the rot too. So I'm not definitely positive, but sure. Um, I right. think eventually it's going to be it's going to be a danger because the the side where the rot is is it's like half of the tree, and you know it, it could come down in the sidewalk. So yeah, no, no, that's good. I just wanted. So no, I know, I know. I'm just, well, I'm just saying. Yeah. We we looked at it, and and uh, Westman and Gantz are fine with taking it down. I think they would prefer to have it taken down. Um, but um, you know, we we could also look at taking out the side that is leaning over the sidewalk. But nah, just you know, it might as well take the whole thing down. You yeah, know? while you're doing it, do it right. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, uh, and we'll hear from Ray or the two boys or what that's gonna change so all right um what about dickerson road how did how's everything there uh yeah we finished that up last week I, it was uh it was a challenge but uh we put a lot of big stone in there we were about uh, i think around 20 tons over what we originally thought but you know that's how it goes sometimes uh, uh but uh, as far as i know uh, if the project is complete, we sent an invoice. Good, Donnie. What, what's your you were uh, uh, no, road. It's, uh, looking good? I think um, uh, Martin's just waiting for you know some, as we drive on it, some traffic and you know just kind of uh, uh, push you know uh, comp- 
packed in a bit. And then he's going to grade in front of there. Um, and then, uh, basically, I mean, at, at some point, uh, I guess, you know, some kind of guardrail is going to be happening there as well. Um, yeah. At least that's what he's thinking. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so we were able right? to move um, the money that was on for the Mountain Road grant Um so that money was successfully moved over to this project here, and yeah. we will we will reapply for um, the structures grant this year uh, on that mountain road project. Also, the grants covering Dickinson Road, the, the state allowed you to transfer us to transfer it over. Yes. Yep. Oh, cool. Yep, Sherilyn um, puts a considerable amount of time working with um, the um, people with the state on that. It's a lot more difficult than it sounds, <laughs> if you would believe it, but uh, it was uh, successful anyways. So we may have to, or the town may want to look at possibly putting guardrail there. I know Martin doesn't want to put him in, and it's not a heavily traveled area, but it is, with the trees gone now, it's pretty open too um, I think he, Martin always has uh, kind of objects to guardrail certainly because of the, the snow and such but um, builds up and it's a little more difficult to, to work around them but I know we put the ones on the hill going up that are a little bit easier to work around and maybe something like that might work there um, and still provide uh, the protection that we're looking for yeah and as long as this, um, we have this grant, if we can get them under that, I'll we'll try to do that. So I'll have him reach out and get a um, quote on that, because uh, there's no sense of closing this out without trying to um, maximize it, especially if we need that. I wonder if it could, wonder... be, some, if it could be like a wooden, uh, you know, like uh, you know, like just couple of wooden posts and a wooden beam, you know, and just, and, and keep it really simple. I mean, someone, you you know, I mean, it's, you got to be, I don't know how you, yes, you got to be careful driving through there, and that's what you need to be, I, I, you know. I, yep. No, I think, you think that we don't have to overkill, but, um, yeah. but you hate to lose someone over the hill there. If it's, like I said, it was only one tree that was there, so it's not like there was a hell of a lot of <laughs> stuff there anyway. Right. I mean, we might have to work with uh, Upper Valley Services, maybe, and and I, I mean, I could talk to Dennis Spray. He's a great guy, and we've done it before. But the, those cedar bushes that are on the right side, you know, maybe they just got to really get some serious cut back to them or something, so people could be a little bit more to the right of the road, and you know, it, it wouldn't be as you know oh. the only time. There's, there's, there's quite a lot of people when the play Upper Valley service is going on. There might be 40 cars during the day going in and out of there. So, um, sure, well, there's got to be something, but you know, like like you just said, maybe it doesn't have to be overkill. Right. We'll have Martin work with uh, to see what's out there, and if, if he it doesn't sound like he's real thrilled about putting anything there, so I think he'll get something minimal. Um, that's still doing the job because he's looking to yeah. make sure uh, things are are safe. But um, so I, I well, maybe uh, I can reach out to Dennis Gray. You know, I'll reach out to him because I was in touch with him during the whole construction and shutting the road. And maybe I can meet him down there and just sort of like we could take a look at it, or again, maybe Martin could look at it. And we could. Why don't like you, uh, when you get so all right, Don? Once you set up a time with. Um, Upper Valley Services, and then let Martin know uh, yeah. that you're meeting with him. And Martin's usually pretty good, unless he has something really hard scheduled. Yeah. He'll he'll make it there. Um, yeah. And uh, especially if he, I yeah. think he'd rather cut something like that back than than have guard guardrails there. So yeah, um, or, you know, why don't yeah. you try to reach out, do that copy Martin and, and ask him for a meeting or, or say, you know, I've got this meeting yeah. scheduled. Uh, can you attend with me? And if not, just go yourself and talk 
and then bring yeah. it back and meet with yeah. Martin. But it's better if you can have so you're cutting out. Because Martin will have questions that you don't think of um, uh, just because that's what he does. Um, so. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. All right. Very good. So the construction stuff sounds like everything is going well. Um, thank you, Ray. If anything's come up. Of course, John, um, thanks for for uh, being right on top of stuff as well. And we look forward to, to more uh, updates as they come along. So that was just the sidewalk, right? Well, sidewalks and catch basins, yeah. And and Dickerson Road, but is, can, do we in this at this time of the meeting, as far as construction update, do we talk about the bridge? Um, you can. What 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 is it you want to talk about with the bridge? Well, um, let's see. Well, there was a there was I guess some notification, um, a letter that we all got at the beginning of the week from the project manager for the state saying that it could potentially be closed August and September. Right. Correct. So right. right. We, uh, I think it was Rachel um, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. But, yeah, so uh, that's, I mean, uh, the bridge, until we find out further when construction starts, I don't know if there's a lot that we can uh, uh, do or plan around it. Oh, so we don't even really have a, they don't have a, a physical start date. No, they were looking to start, and if you read that through, they were looking to start, I think, June 22nd, 25th right. in that range. Yep. Um, but because of the contractors having uh, problems with supplies, they're not sure, you know, when that mm -hmm. date's going to be. And that's what uh, she was looking, and if we had any feedback whether those um whether it pushed back made a huge difference uh you know so, and, yeah and that's so the that bridge would be closed. Yeah, i'm it looking would, at the email that the bridge would be closed mid-august to the end of september right so um i actually uh asked tasha if i <laughs> should i send her some comments and i did which i could you know just quickly share with you you know, with the rest of the board. And as far as, I mean, there's probably nothing we can do about it, but if it is delayed, that'll get into the school season and the increased traffic of everybody driving their kids or kids driving to school, if, of course, school starts. But let's assume we get some kind of normalcy and schools get back. Right. So there'll be the buses and the cars. I mean, this is what I quoted to Jennifer. There'll be potentially two holidays, Labor Day and, and uh, Columbus Day, if the project goes late and goes into October, which will be, also be increased, you know, fall foliage traffic and stuff. And then, um, so then when I mentioned that to her, then I just went, here's some stuff that could maybe be thought about as far as, you know, some signage, and I won't bore you with the details. I can forward to you what I wrote to her um, as far as some suggestions. And um, the only other little update I have about that, so I will send you what I what what I wrote to this woman Jennifer through Sasha. Sasha, are you on? You must be on the line, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you forwarded that to her, right? With what I yes, wrote, I those bullets. Yep. Okay. Cool. So I'll send it to the. I should have copied the rest of the board, but uh, I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, so I did one other little thing is that I did reach out to John Jameson, who's on the select board of Wait and Waitsfield, and uh, just chatted with him about, you know, uh, Meadow Road and Pony Farm Road and, and North Road. And he was going to talk to his board tonight as far as participating in um, the sharing the cost for signage, what kind of signage, we, you know, is it going to be the electronic uh, billboard with something written on, and then you know I was even talking about do we get some signs that people's neighbors, our neighbors, can put in their yard, like drive as if your kids lived here. You know we could maybe get a few of those signs as well. So that's my little Pony Farm Road update. All right. Any uh, questions for for Don on that? No, none here. 
right. Yeah. You know so, I, mean? I mean, I think as far as the comments to her, I mean, we all, I mean, I think the obvious, I mean, if anyone doesn't know what the school's going on or goes on, is, is nuts. But um, they want to get it from the discussions of what I've, we've had, they want to get it started as soon as possible. It's not yeah, no. a question of uh, them wanting to push off. I just don't want to see them decide to say, all right, we push it into another another season. So oh, I think right. they need to be careful of uh, pushing too much because that might be, you know, what they're, they come back and say, all right, uh, well, you guys want, you know, so we got to be careful about what we say and how we say it. Um, because they can take that, and I don't want to go through another season, um, you know, with this bridge, the way it's at. Um, oh, yeah, no kidding. No, I mean, this is just, you know, some thoughts on how to make it so the people who live on that road and walk on the, you know, don't just get totally destroyed. No, I think, you know? and I, you know, I think we've talked about that. And, uh, yeah, okay. And, uh, as I said, we've got and both us and Waitsfield have there are there is money, so they you know I'm hoping they will uh, participate. So it'll be interesting uh, to see what they come up with. Um, but continue your dialogue with Mr. Jameson and uh, uh, let us know what happens. But certainly um, prior to sending out stuff, please let me or start with me or start with the board as far as uh, that goes. <laughs> Got it. I just worry if we put up too much signage there, we're going to attract more people to go over that road. Kind of the thing, you tell people not to do something, they're going to want to do it more. Or people who may not be aware that that goes anywhere are now going to see these signs and wonder, oh, where is that going? So No, no I agree, Kelly, you make a good point. It's, it's balanced, because, and that's what um, when we were on one of the calls with the state, um, that was brought up. I think actually Cheryl was on the line uh, at that point, and she brought she talked about putting more signage on Pony Farm. And the state's opinion is, the more you put up, you do you, you attract a lot of people with it, um, and the locals are the locals know it's there and are going to do it and. You need to make them aware of, of safety issues, but the more marquee signs you start putting up, it starts attracting um, more more people. So, um, again, that's you know we need to discuss that and, and work through that. But um, I appreciate your uh, point there, Kelly. All right, anything else as far as signage or? Uh, construction, pony farm, or, or anything? I notice um, Martin has spent uh, the last week or so out on that road. They've been doing ditching, and I think they put down some material. Um, I, I know they have because my wife was trying to uh, bike on it today and or run on it or something that wasn't very friendly. So um, there's a lot of fresh material on, on that road, and I know they've been working on the dishes. So um, I think it will be up to um, up to the traffic when it, when it does start. All right. So um, there's nothing else there. We'll move ahead. Um, Sasha, what do you have for reports? Actually, I have nothing tonight. Nothing. All right. Um, John, I know you had uh, a meeting with the Finance Committee this morning. Do you have some stuff to share? Yeah, sure do. <clears throat> uh, uh, f first thing um, was uh, from Cheryl Lynn um, mentioned that you know, as soon as the grievances are held, um, we should you know, if need be, have a special meeting so that we can set the tax rate. Okay. The sooner sooner the better, get some money coming in. Um, and um, the Finance Committee also thought that it would be a good idea to, uh, or, actually, or Cheryl Lynn as well, um, thought it would be a good idea to um, get some kind of an announcement out in front porch forum reminding people that, you know they can they can pay early if they want. You know, not that they're going to get any discount or anything, but you know, you know, um, Charlene said some people aren't even aware that 
they can do that, you know, because the way we talk, talk of it, the way we at town meeting, you know, the article always says November 1st, um, but we don't make it clear that, you know, we'll take your money any time. So at any rate, um, that might be a good idea to to do. Um, I know. I think uh, Don has brought that up a couple times, uh, talking about the tax yeah. as well. So as soon as we know what what the tax rate is and the bills are out, I think not only the bills will go out, but also uh, remind people that there is no penalty for paying early. Right. Okay. Um, so on the taxes, though, can we? I mean, I know it's, it might maybe not a tax. It's impossible that anything will happen this year, but. If someone's only getting one percent or two percent on their money, right? Isn't that what? It's really low the interest rate right now. Yeah. Right? On people's. So if if we were to say to someone, pay your taxes early, we'll give you one percent off, but the town takes that money and then invests it while we're waiting to spend it, or we, you know, we must have a place that we put it in some bank or some place that we get interest on that money. Wouldn't it be just kind of be a wash, and that would give people an incentive to pay early? Yeah, we uh, unfortunately we can't do anything can't with do that. taxes like that. You need to that has to be voted on by the town. No, no, I understand, but maybe maybe that's something to look into in the future, next year or the year yeah, after. No, I think I think in the no. last meeting or even the meeting before we we yeah. talked about that as far as looking at uh, ways, you know. For people to pay early, and I think the finance oh, committee is actually that's something that we've asked them to uh, to come up with something. Yeah, so that's 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 what we also discussed. That you know that we'll, we'll review that at some time, right? You know, not in the not too distant future for for next year. Right. Yeah, that might be a good thing. Yeah. Um, My uh, thing at work. Uh, that. The other thing, the in terms of the. Um, Paying for the excavator, um, there is more state money and, and federal uh, money, um, or, or well, what's what's happening according to Cheryl Lynn right now is that there's a bill up where um, they will, for tax anticipation notes, they will uh, lend it either very very low rate or zero percent rate. And she thinks that we might it might also uh, be for purchases, so and our capital expenditures. So um, we're going to wait on that before we make any final decisions on how to finance. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, but we did we did figure that the the rates are low enough uh, through the banks that even if that doesn't come through, it might be. Wiser just to just to borrow from the bank, because um, Cheryl, Sherilyn, you know, really really has some concerns about using any of the savings reserve money, you know, in case we do need it for for a tax anticipation note. Okay, no, that's fine. Like I said, money's cheap right now, so yeah, I'm uh, getting cheaper, so there's no, uh, so that's probably where to go for it. Right. So, um, uh, you know, rather than do a motion this morning. A couple of people wanted us to, you know, have a what if type of motion, and I suggest we just just wait and just meet again, you know, with, in a month or or whenever we find out, and then uh, we can decide. So, okay. um, and then the the other thing is um, in adding a member. I believe that if we want to add. A committee member because we we did have Don LaRocca before, but you know, he resigned several months ago uh, or about a year ago, and um, so I I think we just basically just need the select board's blessing that we can add another member. All right, have you guys um, do you have someone in mind? Or are you gonna how are you? Well, about we, d- we did, but then we didn't want we, he nobody's talked to him yet. So they they suggest we don't mention any names in case he reads minutes and find, and says what I never asked to do right, that. Right, sure. I'll so, find out if, well, I think you know we've had <laughs> someone on there. Um, 
you know, it should. Uh, uh, we don't. I don't mind uh, having another person. I right. Think everyone should have an opportunity. You know, it should be something that we we open up. But if you guys have a candidate in mind, you know, I would certainly keep that in mind as I'm talking to candidates. But, um, you know, should everyone should have an opportunity to to uh, to be on that board. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I agree. Um, so, um, yeah. So, as long as we have the select board blessing that we can add some, well, then then basically we'll have. Uh, um, what does everyone else think, or is this is that position um, important enough that we appoint someone that we that that committee has gone out and handpicked? But, but my opinion is that. Go ahead, Ray. Okay. Yeah. No, I think I don't mind adding another board member to that, um, but it should be put out there that if we're going to, uh, we should make it open to everybody. I think you suggested that uh, earlier, that Tom, that we j- we shouldn't just limit it to. The oh, okay. Yep. Don, what was your? What do you think? Well, they can still ask the guy, I would think, you know. Well, well yeah, I know. Well, I know. Well, Bob, and then put it out there. But no, Bob, Bob Holden was just, just didn't want to, you know, say anything to uh, to this candidate. And I don't mind telling you, just, just nothing in the minutes at this point. Uh, Dan Zucker's name came up, and, and I agree, he would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, because he really is, is really interested in, in the town, and he's, you know, he's, he's spoken very well at town meeting and so on. Um, but um, at any rate, so um, you know, we just didn't want to um, recommend anybody number one uh, without talking to him, and then also didn't want to talk to him if we didn't have the select board's sure. blessing on adding somebody. Well, I think, um, but I mean, it's, it. bottom line is, you know, we were also reminded that, I mean, that, um, you know, the select board has interviews the people and we did with Bob Holden. And, um, um, I don't remember if we did with, with Becky, I think we did with Becky yeah, O'Clair as well. Yeah. I think everyone. Oh, we so. did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, go ahead and one, two, you know, I think it's fine, uh, you know, uh, but, and go ahead and talk to Dan and say, look, we'd like you to be on the board. Uh, you need to apply. Uh, there may be other people applying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. just, uh, you know, have a, and you know what, if we get some superstars, I mean, I, that, that would be our, you know, our biggest problem to have two or three superstar Economic mm. people come out of the woods, you know. Um, I'd expand the board to if it was that, uh, if it was something like that. So right, right. Um, let's not worry about that. Let's try to get as many qualified people. Right. Okay. So. All right. Great. Right. All right, uh, Callie. Did you have any communications announcements or or anything? No, the only thing I was going to say is I kind of worry about doing a discount on the tax rate because I wouldn't know how that would work with people who have their escrowed. I mean, it's hard enough to get the bank to pay it on time sometimes, let alone having to pay it early. So that kind of cuts a large population out of new home buyers who do that. So yeah, and just something to think about. Yep, no, I think you're right there. Yeah. Um, all right, Don, have you got anything more for announcements, communications, or such? Um, no, I don't know if that uh, would – I have something else I want to talk about, but I think it would either be an old or new, or new business. So, no, I'm good. All right. I don't have any um, now. The only thing we had, we had uh, communications, I think you all saw, that came from uh, Peter Kulis. Is that how it was pronounced? Yeah. Yes. Um, did everyone have an t- opportunity to to look at that? Yeah. He was uh, he was looking for us the select boards. He's he's a resident from Waterbury, 
writing the select boards, urging uh, open discussion with the Harwood Union Unified District School Board um, about um, Bridget Neese concerning um, transparency and, and other issues. Um, John, have you heard anything about this or read much about it? Uh, no, I mean that's that's the first I had uh, I had heard anything about it, and it's not only transparency of, of Bridget; it's, it's the board, or primarily the chair and vice chair, who it looks like knew all about it too, and they never brought it to the board. So, um, I, I think we've yeah that should be pursued further. All right, why don't? Um you know, we got. I haven't had a, uh, an opportunity to really spend a lot of time looking at it. I I, I have read it, um, but as we're meeting next time, you know, why don't we between now and then take a little bit of more time uh, taking a look at that, um, and then maybe uh, you know the board, you know, we'll see some. Maybe the board as they're getting out of this budget uh, woe that they've been in, and it sounds like they may with this new vote. Um, you know, maybe this is something that they could put on their agenda. But um, let's let's bring this up on our, our next um, uh, board meeting as a, as an old business item. Yeah, and perhaps um, Tom, if you could reach out to our representatives to you know see what yep. they know about it. Okay. Yep. You know, get it would be good to get their their input and then. You know, that would help us quite a bit too. All right, and that's uh Maxine and No no. Um oh. no, I mean our Oh uh, our, our our board members. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I will do that. I mean certainly could reach out to reach out to Maxine. <laughs> that ain't <laughs> think of it. Yeah. Well they should. I mean but yeah, it's they, a, they, specific they have, wide thing, so they absolutely uh, run away from anything that is any controversy, which is really disappointing. Um, but anyways. So, but do I it. understand it just in a quick nutshell that we're gonna we're gonna be voting on the same budget amount that was turned down, but it's not gonna have the school relocations and the construction and all that. I mean, the the middle school is gonna stay at Harwood and the I mean, and, and five six is going to stay in more town, and that's going away for for another another year at least. Is that how you understand it, or that's how I understand it? Yeah. As well, Donnie. Okay. What? I as well understand that as well, like that. That it's uh, that seems to be the word. I haven't seen anything, you know. Really, I'm waiting. This week's Valley Reporter will probably have that story. Right. That's what I thought I heard. Okay. And I did see um, there was a, a a piece in the front page part there on, uh, that Peter um, wrote. Yeah. Um, and Peter has been, you know, an advocate for voting down the budgets and has been really on top of this as far as what's going on. Um, and he's... He's endorsing this and saying they're on their way to a, um, you know, the right way. So that gives me a little bit of confidence that yeah, me um, too. That things yeah. are are going in the right direction. Well, does that does that now make it that we can back burner uh, Neil Ness the the pulling out of the school district the the Neil Neil's uh, petition and such? I mean, maybe that's going to go on a little bit of a back burner. Uh we'll see. You know. Yeah. But, Let's uh, let's hear more of what they have to say. I mean, this is yeah. You know, I think okay. you never want to say no to anything until you get everything right in front of you. But right, you know, I think yeah. I think things can be uh, worked out. Yeah, this is just for one year, and you know, who knows what what they'll have the following year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this they didn't really have much choice, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know they were really over a barrel, and I mean they put themselves there. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, for God's sakes! But um, and I still wonder whether they understand what they or why they were uh, put there. But anyways, um, 
so that's I just wanted to bring that up. The other thing is I did sign off on a letter to CB Fiber um, from the towns, and it was just <laughs> urging uh, funds for um, you know, expanded fiber into the towns. So mm-hmm. it's just a kind of a plea because of um, things that are going on. So nothing big, just another uh, endorsement there. Um, okay, good. Uh, and uh, so I think that's, that's all I had. Um, I guess we have the minutes uh, for the 4th, uh, May 4th, uh, 2020. Is there any uh, one that has a motion on that? I'll move we accept those minutes of uh, May May 4th. May, May 4th, you're right. May 4th, yeah. <laughs> you good? Uh, is there a second? Second. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, any further discussion, or is there anything anyone wants to um, address in those meetings? Minutes? Nope. All right. Hear nothing. I'm going to uh, ask for a vote. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Sounds like a unanimous. Thank you. All right. So now we're into old business, and Don, it sounds like you might have had something that you wanted to bring up. On old business, what what do you got? Well, I wanted to, um, you know, when we had a meeting before we all shut down, we were all thinking about different things that we wanted to, you know, like yep. see or want to do and stuff. And, and then obviously we've tabled it all because it was just so crazed, right? But um, I was thinking about getting back on. Uh, I'm thinking about the town hall slash library and whether we would actually try to see if we could get some kind of a committee or I don't really like the word task force, but you could throw that name out there, you know, and, you know, put it out there, see if some people might want to volunteer. I'm sure some library trustees would be interested in being on the on a committee like that, just sort of start to uh, get a feel from the community. I and mean, we have another year now is going to go by, and at least maybe during this year we could be thinking and talking about some possibilities, you know, going forward with the town hall. So that's yep. what I'd like to try to work on and try to do. I mean, even though the first kind of meetings might be by Zoom, but, you know, at least you could get it going. Yeah, I don't I think it certainly has to start I think with um the decision we made to have the library there for the next year um give us a little time because it's not like we we have to even debate about all right what are we going to do in this fall are we bringing the library back or are we not. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's just when's the timing right as far as this this pandemic to try to start uh, getting something together. I don't know. Maybe people have a ton of time right now and and can do it. Um, but I'm concerned a li- some of the people that uh, may have some interest in this and some skin in the game here, you know, aren't the Zoom types. Um, that's yep, that's some of the too. historical society p- people. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so I don't want them to feel like, hell, you know, we're getting – bamboozles here we you know not they may be tech wizards so i i shouldn't yeah know, no i hear what you're saying we want to make sure it's totally inclusive right Some so i mean i think oh, yeah what you know what i maybe have you do donnie is, is why don't you come up with a plan of all right this is what i want to this group to to do i mean i think we all know what we want it to do but let's put something in writing and let's Think out. All right, what are we? How are we going to put this together? What's this group going to look like? Um, mm-hmm. And why don't you come back with the board to that? And all right, and say, all right, I've got a plan. This is what I how I want. I want to start you know, this month here. Get eight members, nine people, seven, whatever, it, or as many people that would do it. Mm-hmm. Um, have a public form here, you know, and start like that. Um, okay. So that there's a plan that we as a board can endorse. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe even a schedule, a rough schedule. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good for that. Yeah. Okay. 
good. Cool. Sounds All good. Right. Um, is everyone else uh, good with that? Yeah, that sounds fine. All right. So, um, any other old business that anyone has or wants to bring up? Very good. Yeah, uh, um, no, I think I'm good. Oh yeah, I have one. Yeah. All right, Don. What is it? We want to be thinking about the Mad River Valley ambulance that's on our, on our back burner about how they they came to us and said, you know, well, I mean, then of course we went into everybody's in a. The right, I think we I think we decided that um, something in August we were going to. Yeah, I think I think I think I think November is what we. Uh, Originally thought on the, uh, the the election, right? I think so, Tom. Yeah, I think we wanted to give us some time, um, and certainly now with what's going on, before I start giving away too much yeah. money, we need to we need to figure that out. But you know, I think it's good. It's you know we can put that on an old business pending down below, so that it's yeah. something that doesn't fall off the radar. But it's nothing that we need to. Um, Proactively work on now. I don't think. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, so, any other new business or any new business out there? Uh, have you seen the most recent email from Katrina Brackett? Just came through. Uh, no, uh, an hour or so ago. No, no, no. Uh, it's it's pretty sure. Let me just read it quickly. Uh, hi, everyone. I have helped NECA turn into a non-for-profit called Neck of the Woods. The superintendent informed us yesterday no summer programs can use the school this year. We kind of anticipated this, so are already thinking how we can run in multiple locations. Do you guys have any suggestions? One thought was the basement of the town hall for the pre-K kids. Please let us know your thought. I... I don't know, I, I think it's a little early to start thinking about, you know, something this summer for, for the little kids. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, something outside maybe, but I don't see I don't see indoors as being a... I mean, especially yeah. the basement is not the greatest place. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so... Let's they can't continue. use. They can't even use the uh, elementary school, huh? Wow. So this is. Yeah. This was Mecca again. What we're talking about? Yeah, and 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 then she signs it, Katrina Brackett, Neck of the Woods Office Administrator. I mean, so were they just like canning their whole program they had at the school? It sounds like. I. I yeah, it does sound that way. Because that, that's what was a major draw there that Dwayne worked on. I thought was... I I mean, uh, they even... She talked about it as being... Uh, you know, it was even financially uh, worked. And now they're discontinuing it. Well, it doesn't sound like they're dis- discontinuing well, it necessarily. Well, they're but... kicking them out of the buildings, John. I mean, you know... Um, well... No summer programs can use the school. I mean, in other words, they can't. It's it's not there now, and they're and they look. It sounds like they're not going to do any summer programs as well. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't see what a week. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I think. Thanks for bringing that up. I think we need to look into that a little bit more. Yeah, no, I definitely definitely agree, I, and I I certainly would want to know what this turning Mecca into a non profit is all about too. It's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, no, I, it's just I'm, it's weird that, um, but you know, John, can you maybe forward that to us or something? Oh, she sent it to everybody. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it. Okay. Um. Oh, you're not on there. Come to think of it. There you go. Yeah, All right. I'll I'll forward that to you. Okay, thank you. I can't five thirty seven. I just picked up my uh, thing. So yeah, all right. Yeah, that's something we should be interested to take a look at. Oh, um, here it comes. All right. 
All righty. So, any other new business? Well, you guys are going to kill me. I got to, I got to just ask something because I just looked at my notes, and, and it goes back with Tom and Ray, you and myself. So, you were talking about uh, in, this is just quickly on the sidewalks about trying to meet with all the people in town, or you know, be able to talk to them. Remember, we were going to try to do that, and we realized it's not doable. But so Ray, I think you you said you were handing out a flyer to everybody, and oh, that's I'm oh, sorry, I, for, I forgot uh, to mention that. Yeah, what we did actually is is uh, Sa- Sasha and Sherilyn sent out a letter to everybody. Oh, great. It was the letter the letter that uh, came from Dubois, and uh, we decided it would be would be a, a better idea. Actually, I, I spoke with Tom about it too. That it would be better for them to get something, you know, mailed to them rather than stick it on their door or something, you know. It, right, right. Yeah, so um, so those all went out. And, uh, and and there's, you know, one another thing, again, Donnie, it's a little new because you just got on, but we've been dealing and talking with these people in the village for several years about oh, this yeah. project. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we have met you know, over the years, several, several times. So at this mm-hmm. point, nothing's new. You know, that's why I even said to John the other day, what else do we need to tell? We don't have anything else to say or tell. Yeah. You know, everyone knows what's going on. It's been a part of the process. So, um, you know, sometimes we we forget that, or we did. And, and, okay. But with yeah. everything going on, they came up with a letter. Um, it was sent out, and... You know, more what I've gotten from anyone is like, you know, when are you starting? You know, so. Right. Um, you know, I think uh, that's how that was handled. Okay. Although I, I will say it did, it did prompt a response from uh, um, Carla and Fred Messer. They own the, the little house right at the corner of Doctors Brook yep. Road, right at the end. And. They were mentioning that their their septic line actually goes under the road to the other side, and we have other lines. Cutler's is the same thing, goes across or or uh, uh, Miltner's, um, same thing goes under the road to the other side, and um, they said it was never on the drawings, and so I confirmed that with uh, Nick at Dubois, and he said, yeah, it's not on there. So you know. It was it was really good. We did get that letter out because, you know, they, they never came forward be- before way back when when we were talking about these things. So yeah, well, good. I guess it's good. We don't want to be running uh, digging up sewage lines, right? You know, right. The, oh. Letting them go. Well, I've, so where I've called and left a message with them that we would sure like to know the exact location. I mean, if they could mark exactly where it is, so they can be really careful when they. We're digging out there. Now, this isn't; those aren't on any kind of town deeds or anything like that that we know of. Then, well, or, I mean, you know, again, this is all the work that um, that Pat did. You know, I mean, that was, as far as I know, that was his job to do all that beforehand. So, I guess whatever happened, it was never put on the drawings. But the court. The- well, we heard the Cutler, the Cutler building sewer goes right into the town hall sewer by deed. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. 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 And and so, so I, I mean, I'm sure there were, at some point, I'm, I would imagine everybody's probably went under the, the road. You know, until they dug their own well, and, the, and you know, on that side, the other side. You mean septic? And there's also water. I mean, I know, right. I know people um, that have uh, their springs are up on the hill, and that you know, the, where they have their water fed down across the road. So, is right. that stuff on there, John? Yes. Yeah. Those yeah. those are all on there. All right. I thought. Thought it was a good thing, but all right. Well, um, let's continue with that, and, and thanks for for sharing that stuff. Um, 
So yeah, Don, there's. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. I was just yeah. curious about how. No, that was it was done. It wasn't dropped. It was just something that was yeah. taken. There was actually, I think there was an email, Sasha. It was covered in there, but at this point in the bottom. But anyways. yeah, Sasha, anything else that you have that's going on? Concerned? No, Sasha is back in the office, um, working. We don't have anyone. It's not open for people to come in. Um, Sasha, why don't you share any highlights or disappointments or anything that we should uh, be aware of? Um, not really anything right now. Um, I'm not back in the office every day, but <clears throat> I've been going in and being able to get a little bit more work done with the photocopier and scanning things and stuff like that that I don't have at home. All right. All right, um, so if there's nothing else anyone has on their mind they want to discuss, um, we'll be time to Well, I, I did get the thing about to look at the um, being the first constable, and yeah. um, I, I, I I don't think I'm up for the, the challenge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, you know st- we're, still in, we're still in need of a first constable. You know what? Speaking of first constable, what we we need to um, petition the next time you, we see our like our Maxine and the other lady there uh, from Kara. Yeah. Uh, Kara, we can ask them about maybe the the state can change their laws that the uh, the constable should have powers to do um, speed speed enforcement. You know, they have had some complaints with people with speeding cars and such, but we've never been able to... I mean, the, the sheriff's office was worthless when we had them contracted. They couldn't give us reports when they were here, um, where they were, and they wouldn't take any direction from us. Um, the state police does what they can, but, you know, they're thing is you need to continue just to call us if you want us to come around um but if we had a constable that the only thing they did was just run it ran a radar gun and uh right. did that you know and had the powers to give a ticket i think you know we could settle a lot of our speeding problems and and um i don't know maybe um you know wouldn't I mean, I just think we have we have it's a huge problem. I don't know any solutions aside from you know having someone. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yep. So next time they're you, you're talking to them, they want to do good and make a nice law. You know, when it, they uh, they do that for us. Hmm. All right. So okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. All so in favor. Moved. Hi. Hi. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.